So now uh, we are going to confirm uh, that we made a ligation. We mixed uh, cDNA of uh, insulin uh, which we digested. So you know restriction enzyme when it cuts the DNA we call this reaction uh, restriction digestion or digestion. So insulin cDNA digested with EcoR1 and XPA1 and in the vector uh, which was also digested with EcoR1 and uh, XPA1 we put them together in an Appendorf with ATP with the buffer indeed and we added the DNA ligase and we uh, assume that you know because both the uh, vector the plasmid DNA and the inside they are digested with same enzymes so they will be uh, glued together they will be uh, joined together and one thing yeah one thing I forgot to mention uh, why they should be joined together because these enzymes which are uh, called restriction enzymes when they cut they generate sticky ends sticky uh, because they are they can they have the complementary sequences for example if we have for example we have eco r1 we said it has G A A T T C If we digest any DNA with this enzyme, the equal one is going to cut it like this. And the end result of digestion with EQR1 is two molecules with ends which will be like this is basically this one, this part GCTTAA. G C T T A A like this and of course the other part will also look like which is this one C now if you mix a DNA or two different DNA molecules which contain these and that's why we call them sticky ends because this sequence is complementary to this one. So two equal one sides, two DNA molecules with ends which have equal one, you know in the presence of DNA ligase, so this A is going to be complementary here, this one there these and then with the help of DNA ligase the two DNA molecules can be glued together or ligated together. Same is the case for uh, XPA1 for example the sequence of XPA1 is When XPA1 is going to digest, you will have sticky ends like this. So the sticky ends of XPA1 are going to be like this. So this sticky end of XPA1 the, when you mix two different molecules which are digested with the XPA1 so these are complementary 
and in the presence of DNA ligase, they will be glued together. Now, what we had, we had, you remember, EcoR1 and XPA1, we decided for digestion of insulin and our vector. So I draw here. Remember our plasmid? We decided we are going to digest it with EcoR1 and XPA1. This was our vector. We had insulin cDNA, which we amplified in PCI. We will talk about PCI in, in great detail in an independent lecture. And we decided it that we will cut them with EcoR1 and XPA1. After digestion with EcoR1, XPA1, our vector will look like, because this will be linearized now, it will no longer be circular molecule. So we have now vector like this, and we have our insulin gene also after digestion will look like like this. So on this side you have the EcoR1, on this side we have XPA1. Here you have EcoR1, XPA1. Okay. Now, once we mix this insulin insert, digested with EcoR1, with the vector, digested with, so we mix them together, in the presence of DNA ligase, an enzyme which is going to, you know, glue together, help, so because these are sticky ends, equal one of your insert with equal one of the vector, equal one of your, uh, uh, sorry, XPA1 of your, XPA1 of your insert with XPA1 of your vector. And DNA ligase is going to uh, make the rest of the job by having uh, by, by repairing the phosphodiester bonds. Now, the end product which in the F of tube we assume is that we'll have our after ligation reaction, we are going to have our vector plus insert. Our insert is here, this insulin gene, okay? Now the question is, how we know this is successful? And in order to do this, the next step, or next step of recombinant DNA technology is, we are going to add all the ligation reaction into bacteria, very specialized bacteria, these are called competent cells. These are specially prepared engineered strains of E. coli, mostly used in our labs. And we add this plasmid, all the ligation mix. So this, everything is called ligation mix. So vector plus insert plus DNA ligase, etc. We add ligation mix and we have bacterial Competent cells 
these are specially prepared bacteria. We mix them together in an append of tube. And these bacteria, they take up, these bacteria are going to take up this, uh, sorry, this ligation mix. And we have to confirm that bacteria indeed contain our vector and insert. And when we add this ligation mix into bacteria and bacteria takes it up, this is called transformation. This reaction is called, you know, bacterial transformation. Now, once you transform the bacteria, the next question is how we are going to confirm that our vector contains insert. So what we have just done, we have done bacterial transformation. By adding ligation mix. Plus E. coli competent cells. And now is the question, how are we going to confirm this is happening? The ligation was successful. And you remember, I told you, I intentionally missed the third part in the vector. Uh, and that third part is an antibiotic gene. For example, in normal, you know, uh, cloning vectors, we have canamycin, we have ampicillin, uh, we have uh, chloramphenicol gene. Mostly, the vectors I have used in my life, they had canamycin and ampicillin. They were perfect, yeah, good in uh, general cloning, rather all the clonings. So, what we have in this ligation mix, we have, you remember, our vector, insert plus vector. Now, this insert has, a, uh, sorry, the vector has its own origin of replication. It has, let's say, canamycin resistance gene. And it has our insulin gene cloned as well. Now, after transformation, what we do, so after bacterial transformation, so we mix this with bacteria. This is the circular DNA of the bacteria. And our desire is, our aim is, this molecule goes inside the bacteria. Now, bacteria will grow, okay? And what we do then, after one hour or so, we play it. Now, this is called transformation mix. Our ligation mix plus competent cells is called transformation mix. And this transformation mix is plated on bacterial <coughs> agar plates, LB. agar plates. LB is the medium which contain all the essential ingredients for growth of bacteria and agar is to solidify them. Now what we do, we simply spread this transformation mix on bacteria like this with the help of a spreader we spread this and we incubate this at 37 degrees Celsius overnight. And next morning we come and we observe whether some bacteria grow or no. And these plates also have canamycin, remember, canamycin antibiotic. Now, 
presence of kanamycin is going to only allow those bacteria which are going to have our plasma, which contains kanamycin. And all the other, because in a, in a hundred microliter of, you know, prepared competent cells, you have billions of bacteria maybe. So, and you cannot afford to have all the bacteria which do not contain the plasmid grow on the plate. That will be like a lawn. You, you won't be able to see any bacteria there. It will be a complete lawn of bacteria and you won't be able to see which one actually is a single colony because we need to pick up single colony in the next step. So, ceramycin is going to help in selection of bacteria which have taken up our plasmid in this transformation reaction. Next morning when you come, we, you see, you know, maybe some colonies, if you are lucky. Uh, in my life, there were many times I went after, you know, a lot of cloning efforts. I went in the morning uh, and, you know, the plates are empty. Uh, so, uh, there are a lot of failures in cloning, uh, but, you know, in, in, I'm talking about 20 years ago. And these failures were, you know, they, they sometimes disturb you because uh, you go weeks after weeks in cloning. And, you know, at the end, what do you think about when you're walking towards the incubator, your legs are really shaking. And, oh God, please bless me, at least one colony. So, there were such desperate times as well. So, what do you see that this single colony is actually not one bacteria. This is, this is progeny of one bacteria which picked up your plasmid and overnight, because it divides after every 20 minutes, this E. coli, and you have, you know, a hundred thousand, couple of hundred thousand bacteria in this colony maybe. And you pick up these colonies and what we do in, in recombinant DNA Next step is we grow them independently, individually, in liquid. Previously, we plated them on LB agar plates. So the next step is we grow them on, uh, uh, in, in liquid LB medium, again with canamycin, so that only the transformed ones uh, grow. Because if you remove canamycin from the media, what is going to happen? Bacteria is going to kick out your plasma. Because there's no selection. Why bacteria should keep your uh, plasmid? It's a burden on it. It's, it, it's uh, resources and energy. So if there's no selection, bacteria is very economical. So bacteria is going to kick out your plasmid. So you have to keep the selection pressure on. You throw these individual columns, you, you pick up with the toothpick, autoclave toothpick. And what we do, we uh, throw these colonies in LB so they, they contain LB plus canamycin this is now the liquid media you throw them individually single colony and you pick randomly so I used to pick normally six colony uh, to confirm my clone and what you do next, you, ne you incubate them 37 degrees C over, uh, overnight and next morning you come and you isolate the plasmid. And we will talk in great detail about plasmid isolation in a different module. Today's lecture is this uh, module is just about giving you uh, the whole uh, frame of genetic engineering. Okay? And what we do then, we confirm after isolating plasmid from these individual cultures, 